Hi everyone, this is Kabul and thanks for watching this video. Today I'll be having a go at the coding challenge set by Chris Williams and his team at Agenta. They run the LabVIEW user group in the Midlands and I think they have got a uh, session coming up on the 10th of June so check them out. Um, their website is www.agentaconsult.com. They've got a good blog there and you can also email that if you want to know more. So the challenge, using the attached 1D array of string data, sort, the, sort it by the last letter of each element and produce a histogram. Any questions? Da, da, da. If you're feeling the LabVIEW 5, extend the VI to be able to sort ah, further. First set up an array of clusters for the data and allow sorting of a selectable element in the cluster. Great. So I've downloaded the files already. So here we have on the left, um, the array of names i think there are about 100 yeah 100 exactly and the second file if i was feeling the vibe was uh to try and sort these based on a selection so let's uh head over to labview so i've got labview community editor over here control n to start a new vi and what i'm going to do is go to the block diagram control e and uh, try and put a screenshot down of that so let me just take a quick screenshot from the other screen so there we go there we have what we need to do uh, no we don't Well, in that case, I'm just going to have to copy and paste the string. So here we go. There's our text string there. Perfect. So let's uh, organize that a little bit differently so we can now uh, go ahead and start coding. So the first things first, if we have a look back at our challenge again, um, we want to open up the files. So let's uh, get a path uh, control down and navigate to that file. And data set. So if I save that first and solution, this is type one. Cool. So control R and I like to just test run the VI as soon as I can, really as and when I can even. So let's have a look. We need to open the file first and sort it um, based on the last letter. Now, if you were sorting it, it's pretty straightforward opening the file and so on. But uh, I'm going to not use quick drop so much on this one so you can see where the VIs are. So here we go. Here's a read from spread string file. What I have done though already is load the file up in Excel. It was an XLS file. I've converted it to a CSV file, you know, Excel save as. And uh, the delimiter here will then be a uh, comma, uh, or I could just leave that as a constant here to be fair. Uh, change that to a constant and that currently is a tab we'll change that to a comma and just have a quick test to see what this looks like and that should be yeah there we are so we've got our array our 2d array currently so what we want to do is just index out the first column in that one because we only need to care about that for part one so we'll just column index so column zero so now if i go ahead and display that that should be a broken arrow because i've got two dimensional array versus a one dimensional array so that we have if we run again control r for that you can see i've loaded all the files all the files the file with all the data so i don't need that anymore right now what i will do is control u to clean up that diagram there and save that again perfect so the challenge is to sort it by the last letter so like i was saying earlier if you were sorting it by the as it was you can quite simply just do a sort 1d array unfortunately that would be too easy so let's go ahead and check out what we can do one of the ways of doing that i suppose would be to reverse the string before i do that i need to put a for loop down so there we have a for loop iterate through each one and let's have a think about this so i want to iterate through that and i want to get the last character that's all i want to do right now and offset of zero because I reversed the order so I can get a single element there. So what I should get out here right now is a um, 1D array of just the characters. So just now we had, actually let me just leave that indicator back on there as well. So uh, do that. We can sort of see Jack and each of the, sorry, Jack and then each of the uh, last characters, R, E, Charlie, Harley, Harry, Jacob and so on. So 
all I've got there is to get the last character. Awesome. Save that. Now, before I move on, what I want to actually do is to create an indexed um, item for that. And what this allows us to do is to use a uh, sort array. Now, I don't need that just then, but what we can do now is I don't know if you know about this, but by doing this, what you can do is get it sorted in ascending order. So if I run this now, uh, there you go. So all the characters, all the last characters are up. And all I've done is give each cluster element of everything in that array an index from zero to zero. This is also how OpenG does its sorting, by the way, if anyone is, uh, has ever looked that up. So um, the OpenG, one of the library VIs anyway. So this is prepare, sort, cool. So that now has got all of the things in sorted order, but what we want to do is actually, I'm going to make use of um, maps in this scenario. So let's have a think. Uh, in LabVIEW 2019, we had a new feature called maps. So I'm going to try and use that. So here, map is a key value pairing pretty much. So we'll create an array of uh, 26 elements for this one what I want to do is replace so what I want to do is create 26 characters to go through this filter and see uh, how many of those there are so to do that what I want to do is if anyone does know about it ASCII characters wise uh, 97 is the character A so what I want to do is add 97 to the index of that so I want to create an array of A to Z so if I put down a cast for that now and I can typecast it from a number to a string and I can take that and put that into my uh, map let's have a look if you've not ever worked with maps before it is very very useful it's like um, a array but you can key value pair almost anything that you want so I want to initialize each of these with value 0 because that count is 0 at this moment in time I do not need to do anything if it's not found which is the other indicator here and if the values change so if I show you what that looks like that is an A to Z map of 0 value uh, what you'll notice is there seems to be some spaces here and that is probably because I don't have a U8, so ASCII characters U8 unsigned 8-bit integers, so if I go ahead and transform that there, or convert that there, sorry, there we go, we've lost the characters, great. So now I have a map which has got all my characters, I want to go ahead and um, see uh, my sorted array, how many there are of each. So what I'll do is go ahead and create an iterative for loop again, take my sorted array, I want to index it using that this time. I'll also take my map as it is with my count of zero. I'll replace that with a shift register. And I want to unbundle that as it comes out. Now let's just do a quick experiment. I'm going to leave this as it is. A uh, quick experiment, quick test. So what I want to do is just see if I can get all of my um, names out. Uh, I don't want to index using that one for this. I just want to go ahead and index my names with the indices of where they have been sorted. So if I then go ahead and create an indicator for this, what I should see, control R again, is a list of names with the sorting on the last character. So A, A, B, B, C, C, and so on. What I've just noticed is it's only the last character, the character before last is not used for sorting at all. So that's what you ask for, that's what you get. Right, so we know that the sorting works. That's the first part of the challenge, sorted by the last letter of each element, perfect. And produce a histogram for each letter. So the histogram part of things is where this uh, map comes into play. So that's a counter effectively. So I'm gonna disconnect that from there and go ahead and hook that there. So let's have a quick think about this. What I want to do is to peek into that map to see if it has, if it exists or not, because there still might be other characters uh, in other languages that might not be 
part of it yet so what I want to do is look into map first if in it's found in that map I want to go ahead and increment one but if it's not found in that one map I want to go ahead and create one so key not found logic is um, inverted on this for me but it makes sense for you then great uh, key not found is true then this is not found uh, if it's not found what we want to do is uh, we'll call that in a minute let's do this one where it is found first so if it is found what I want to do is insert into map and I want to take that value from there and put that across to there if it's found I want to use the same key that I have previously got but now I want to um, go ahead and add one to it. So my increment is right there. So I want to take that index there and add one to that value. Sorry, not index, but yeah, it's the pointer. Uh, once I've done that, that should increment my count. Now, if it is not found on the other case, what we want to do is to go ahead and add it. So insert into map for that one and plumb that in there. And the key is going to be that one, and also the value for this is kind of going to be one, it's not zero because we're not reinitializing it. Save that now. Where else do we want to go? So, the value that we want to look for there is that one, and we could give it a default value. Um, I'm not going to just because. Um, let's have a look if I've made any mistakes there. Oh, I've just spotted a mistake. So I don't want to be giving it that index. I want to be giving it that value there. So realistically, if it's found, it should always have, um, the reason I'm not wearing the default is, uh, if it's found, then it should always have a value. If it's not found, then we are not using that output anyway. So there we are. Right. So let's have a look. Oh, there we go. And that seems like it's done something, which possibly. Um, let me just do a quick check on this. Uh, so, if I was going to check that, what I would probably do is to just do a quick uh, number count on this. Actually, before I do that, just going to press Control U to clean that up. LabVIEW does do a good job sometimes, sometimes it doesn't with the cleanup, but this time it seems to have worked. So histogram, uh, first of all, what I am going to do is to take that map and then go ahead and uh, blah, 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 blah. what do I want to do, I want to get the values out, so let's put that in and I want to create an index of that. I want to get a sum of this one. So add array elements. And then create an indicator for that. So where are we? Sum. There we go. That's 100, which means that all of my counts have got that. That's perfect. So that's my counts effectively. So the for a histogram, uh, what we can do is let's do control space. So this is your introduction to quick drop on this video. So I want a histogram and why, why I want it is just to get the plot out of it. Um, there we are. Uh, this works with doubles quite well. It doesn't work with text uh, quite as much. So we've already got our histogram because um, that's what our map is. We've got a key, which is our character, the last letter, um, and then the count of what one there are. <laughs> Can't speak. And the count of how many there are. So I want to create a bundle on this so that I can create my X and Y axis for this. Um, but I don't want to do that. I just want, I don't even want to use that VI to be fair. I just want to put my histogram down so I can use that graph really. Uh, if I wanted to uh, give it auto pockets, then uh, all my X values could go into here. This would, um, sorry, my count values. I don't know if this will work. Let's have a look anyway. Let's run it. See if that works. Uh, yeah, that is not what I'm after at all, so that would definitely not work. I don't want to use that. I do want to use the um, histogram plot, though, so I'll leave that there. And I want to do what I was about to do at the beginning, which is bundle that up with x values for. Oh, I don't have x values, these are my y values. 
Uh, for my X values, I suppose I could just use these because um, characters I can't put on a histogram on X axis A, B, C, D. So we will get 0 to 26 on the X axis. Great. And the count. That's challenge number one. I think that's it. Save that. And um, we might just do control U to save that one there. Cool. So I think that is challenge number one done. Uh, let's just read that through again. Using the attach 1D array string, sort the last uh, sort it by the last letter of each element and produce a histogram for each letter. Voila. I think that's it. And Chris will, I'm sure, tell me if I'm wrong. So going back to the Excel spreadsheet, um, let me just bring that up. And oh, I'm clicking, but it's not doing anything. So there we go. So looking back at this, we've got the first spreadsheet which we've just been through. And uh, now we're going to have to do this. Um, I'm sure I've already mentioned this, but I've converted these into CSVs to be able to load it into LabVIEW fairly straightforward um, rather than loading into Excel, although there is a way to do that, uh, not in this time scale for me. Okay, so moving back into the other screen, so what I'm going to do now is save that as a uh, different file, so file, save as, open additional, and I'm going to save that as part two. Perfect. Now, before I do anything else, I'm going to close this off. I'm going to open the new file here. And then the extended data set, run that. So here we've got 101. Great. So that's because we've got an extra column. And uh, that's great. Let's have another read of this quickly. So if you're feeling the lab view 5, extend the VI to be able to sort the attached extended data set, which I've just loaded. First, set up the array of clusters for the data and allow sorting of selectable elements of the cluster. Okay, so the first things I'm going to do with that is create an enum. Oh, I know, Chris, you say use a cluster to say which one, but I'm going to use this. We've got name, we've got uh, what else have we got? Shift Enter to go ahead and edit the next item on the enum. So age, let's save that. So I've got an enum there for selection. Great. Where is my enum gone? There it is. So let me expand that a little bit more. Let's just see if I need any of these. I'm gonna take that out from there. I'm gonna remove that from there. I don't think I actually need that array. It's just the same array, but in sorted order. Actually, that is required. That's part of the question. So that's that. I want the histogram and that. I don't really need the map, but I'll put that out as well. And um, I'm going to do that with that. So if I was to do all of this, I'll probably put all of that inside a case structure based on what needs to happen. Uh, so I will go ahead and put my selection in there. This is for not country of birth. This is for the name. And before it goes into that, uh, what I want to do is make sure that I've removed my column, uh, sorry, not column, row, column headers, sorry, delete from array, and I want to take the subset deleted item, uh, index row zero, and I want to delete the first one, so that's length of one, so what I should get is hopefully if I create an indicator for that, oh, I've forgotten, yes, I've not done anything else to clean that up, so if I make this my default case, and I'm going to go ahead and delete this case for now. Um, there we are. I'm not going to run this. So what I'm looking for is, yep, my sum is now back down to 100. So the purpose of the sum is good. And the deleted portion should have just um, the, oh, that's the wrong index. So here we go. And the three elements there. So I'm happy that the deleted items are gone. And that's still loading the file OK. So I want to know that the name is to be identified. 
I'm sure someone will check that, that name is still working. So as far as I know, this is the same list. So my graph and my histogram looks kind of the same, so save that. Let's just duplicate the case. So my country of birth, my country of birth definitely doesn't say, and I should be doing it in the same letter scenario. No, it doesn't. So I'm going to use um, something a little bit different for that then. And for country of birth, I quite simply want to remove most of these. So I don't want my characters. I don't want this. I could just a control space R to remove those. Does this work? Yes, it does. Perfect. And I don't want to do the reversing order stuff. I still want it to take the whole name on to give it an index. I'm sure I could just um, not constant. I could just wire that into a sort array. But let's have a run of this and see what happens. Ooh. Country of birth selection of yes, age is default right now, so that's fine. Um, country of birth, yes, so this has got to be my column index as well. So I know it's got a coercion dot there, which converts it to a different data type, but indexes for the three elements should be fine. There we go, Argentina, Argentina, that's my list of sorted order. Let me just visible items and vertical scroll bar there. And that's on the list, and histogram should be there. And I'm not going to spend time right now to convert that string array to my x-axis there. There is a way of doing that I can think of, which is not very pretty. Um, but right now, I think, I'm hoping Chris will let me off for not doing that. And that's my histogram for countries, I think. And again, I'm sure Chris will let me off. Um, Perfect. Now, age. Now, let's have another think about age. So, age, number, number, maybe I can use um, just the same thing, but hang on. Uh, let's see if that's going to work. Then, let's just make this the default case. So, age is also going to come into this. So, country, we think it works. Name, let's double check. It's still working with the characters. Uh, yep, with the last letters, order is looking good. And here, Argentina, the order looking good. And age, there we go. So 10, 11, 14, 15. Oh, looks, oh, looks okay. Oh, well. Oh. Oh, no. No, 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 no. It's using the lab you sort, which is not very logical. Uh, it's treating as a text. So what I could do is, which way do I want to do this? I could either take this as a copy or I could take the other one as a copy. Why don't I take the other one as a copy for now? Because I think the way I want to do it is um, actually use the maps uh, with maybe my age, right? 100 numbers. So if I duplicate this case and change that to 100, uh, this time I don't want to take my ask characters and I don't need to convert it there. So what I want to do though is take that and put it in so um, but I would like it as a string because this down here is a string. So if I do format into string uh, there and format that constant to percent D and take my input and put that in there. So that'll give me that. The next thing I want to also do is actually I don't, this is not the first order required right now. So I'm going to take that same thing, put that there. And if I go ahead and do initial string, oh hang on, percent D. Oh, I've got it the other way around, haven't I? Um, oh no, of course I want to convert it to number first. Uh, where is that one? That's over here. The string to number. And then the reason I'm doing the string conversion first is because I want to get rid of the element. I'll explain if that works. Oh, age, what? Ah, yes, of course, that is still there. So if I take that now, there we go. Uh, seven is still there. That's not worked. Why has that not worked? So actually, let me just show you what happens if I do this. If I take the number as it is, no change there. Um, but 
the reason I did this was there was a reason. Let me just see. So what I want to do is because the formatting, let me go back here. So right now, 8 exists between 78 and 80. So if I go ahead and change that to a three decimal place as a fixed number, I want to do the same thing over here. And if I do that now, there we go, just like magic. And what is going on with that one? Yeah, so by having a fixed length for the age, uh, what we have done is um, allow the logical um, sorting to happen. Great, so I think that is it. I'm sure there'll be questions and I'm sure I've not explained everything I could have done. If you have any questions or comments or explanations required, or if you want to educate me on anything, do let me know. I know my commenting is not there. I've put one comment down, prepare for sort, that'll be. Um, but I think this is functional. Let me just double check that. Um, in the bar, the next thing is sort, let's first set up the array of clusters and sort now sorting and selling by this. Although I've not gone ahead and used clusters, I have kind of used or achieved what was required by allowing a selection. Um, let's do a quick test actually. So I will leave that open still. And uh, let's go to MLUG and with the data sheet, extended data sheet, let's change this ever so slightly. So here we have got ages, let's put 4.5 rather than 45. What would that do? Let's quick test. There's nothing wrong with the live test. So 4.5. That work. Which I didn't do anything. Did I even save it? Edit. Fine. 4.5. Oh, did I not save it? Save, there we go. Right. Yay, there we go. 4.5 exists. But on this map, why does 4.5 not exist? And name. Oh, hang on. What have I done? I thought I duplicated this. Page. Oh, I did. Oh, sorry. Yes, okay. So, 100 map that map that not found should put it in there so for age oh how bizarre where is 4.5 gone it's added onto that ah of course now that is interesting that's because i've got it set to three decimal places over there wow that is a bug and a half sorry um so what if i was to do uh, hash 3D, would that even work? No. Not 3D. No, that's not gonna work. I've broken this. Sounds like someone's gonna tell me what I've done wrong. Oh no, I've broken this completely. That was a interesting test. So 4.5 in my array, of course it exists there, that's perfectly fine. And how about I put down 3. Point, oh, not 3.5, 3. Point, what? I'm trigger happy. Um, 3. Point, yeah, let's just go with 3.1 for now. I'd like this to work. I should have written some unit tests for this. Ah. Although it's put into four, I've somehow got rounding. But anyway, I'm gonna stop this here because I'm procrastinating right now and I would like to really go to bed. So, uh, that's four. That is always gonna happen, 4.5. Let me know in the comments if you feel like you know what has gone on. I can't keep up, I'm gonna stop now. And this has been the first coding challenge with LabU Community Edition. Uh, thanks to Chris uh, for suggesting, or not suggesting really, giving us the uh, coding challenge. Um, this has been Kabul, and I have been having fun.
So yeah, if you like this, uh, do subscribe and all of that nonsense. Click any buttons that are required to be pressed and show your support. Thanks for watching.